Okay, good afternoon. 3 o'clock on Thursday, January the 19th, or 2.59pm as my clock says. Welcome to the Aquatax Hour with me, Long Steve. So, we're going to go straight back into the refactoring that I was doing on Tuesday evening, on my last stream. Uh, I was, As I was going, I wrote myself a bit of a uh, an outline of the framework, of the code as it was, and it doesn't look like that now because I've mostly removed the tile class uh, there's only a couple of functions left in it, and these are to do with rendering. And I had put most stuff into block, but I'd also done a bit of grid refactoring as well. And we'll just go straight back into it again. Uh, had a nice busy day today, so uh, I haven't certainly been thinking about this. Um, I do like to... Well, I'm, I'm finding it quite enjoying just to like jump straight into the project uh, as and when I do a live stream. And the last one I really enjoyed. I really liked the uh, the sort of slightly more conversational nature of it, where I wasn't concentrating on writing new code so much as I was just refactoring existing code. So there was stuff going on, and I was having to do a bit of a bit of debugging, a bit of fixing where I'd refactored and moved things around and it wasn't working. Um, but I wasn't too uh, sort of cerebrally challenged by it, um, and it was nice to do a, a nice lot of talking. So I'm going to carry on with that today. Hopefully we'll get the refactoring done, and then we can follow on with uh, more coding. Uh, as and when. So I'm gonna. Oh, I need to fire up my grunt task. Oh no, gulp. Grunt. <laughs> Grunt's a very similar uh, automation tool. Um, Java, re Java script-based type stuff. I think. Well, actually, Grunt might be Java-based. I'm not sure. Uh, but I use gulp anyway. Uh, but they're very similar. And I'm sure I've used both in other projects at different periods. Let's just have a quick look at what the JS hint is telling me. Moving objects defined but never used. Oh, okay, that's possibly something I can get rid of then. Um, to do, figure out why the collision seems to be off by one on the vertical in some cases. So that must have been something I was trying to remind myself of last time. And uh, let's just check these other tasks as well. Oh, live coding TV support, good to see it. Um, block size, is that another one that's defined but never used? Okay, actually I'll get rid of that one then because I don't need that. Oh, and somebody else, uh, Top Kung, good to see you. Welcome back. And Rooney too as well, awesome. Uh, had quite a lot of viewers on Tuesday evening. Uh, really enjoyed the uh, Tuesday evening stream I did. Uh, lots of chatting and talking, mainly because I wasn't doing too much coding. Uh, I'm refactoring at the moment, so I'm doing that as well now. Oh, and M2 Naz, good to see you. And Frankly444, oh, good to see you again. It's been a while, hasn't it? Um, gosh, everyone's joining in one go. Uh, I think it's Thursday, I was here on Tuesday. Yes, excellent. I didn't say anything. Okay, well, good to see you today. <laughs> um, so where was I? I was almost finished my refactoring, at least I think I'd almost finished it. Uh, I still got a couple of tile functions or functions in the tile class that I'm planning on getting rid of. Uh, too lazy to log in. Ah, right. Oh, so you get... Yes, I imagine there's people who view the streams just on the website and they don't actually log in. Yes, it hadn't occurred to me that that happens. Anyway. So, create toilet node. Oh, and add here as well. Sure, I've seen you before, actually. Uh, your your name is familiar, or your handle. All right. So I've got draw triangle, create tile node of rotation. Let's see where this is used. We'll search for that. Ah, so this is, is this part of the, ah, this is part of the, ah, yes, sir. We've got to the point where I'm almost, looking at the rendering routines now. Let's make the set of draw nodes corresponding to each rotation. Right, so how does that... I mean, I could just move that into here, couldn't I? But I was definitely going to think a little bit more about whether or not I wanted to do that, or at least how I'm going to do it. So we've got create tile node at rotation, and that actually uses draw triangle, doesn't it? What else uses draw triangle? Does anything use draw triangle? So we've got... We're in tile, so there's the two points in tile. Yep. Uh, okay, and then grid as well. So what does this do? Create grid block nodes. Creates a set of CC draw node objects from the game grid data array. Adds these nodes to the grid node. Ah, not currently used. So what was this doing? This looks like it's probably something that loops over the game grid, or the, or the data in the game grid. And it actually creates um, draw nodes that will render it. Why is that not used then? 
I wonder why. What else? What else draws draws things in the grid? So that that comes down to insert block into grid. What does that do? So that basically sets a load of data in the grid. Does it leave? Uh, am I going? Am I still doing the thing where it's leaving the block in place after? The, so the moving block that floats down the screen. Uh, so that's in game. Here we go. So that's that's my mouse moving code does stuff. That was the init in the intro, or the initialization code for my testing. And then if it's not, then we do this. Um, if the falling block cannot move down, lock it in place. So we do self dot block insert into grid, and then new block. And that that just leave that doesn't do anything with the old block at all. It literally just replaces it. So actually, the rendering of blocks in the grid is done by just leaving the draw nodes hanging around in the scene. So they're added to the grid as children using the Cocos 2 djs uh, node hierarchy, but they're no longer sort of act acted on by the game logic. Let's just um, fire up Chrome and just get my head into the sort of playing it mode. Here we go. So what happens is that's a couple of draw nodes. There's a try well, I think it's a single draw node made out of draw triangle commands. And it's floating down the screen. And when it hits the bottom, it's just literally left on the scene and a new one is created. But the data is inserted into the grid. So at the point the data is inserted into the grid, that's that's then used for collision detection like that. Okay, so we've got draw triangle. Now I might think about leaving that draw triangle somehow as a global function, um, or at least a global utility for now, because it's although it's used by the grid, it's actually I mean it's referenced in the grid code, but it's not actually used yet. It was in there somewhere, wasn't it? I thought. Hang on. Draw, there. Draw try. Yes, it's definitely in there, right? So this is my unused function. So let's go away. Right. Let's um, let's just move this function out then, because I think create tile node at rotation. That's probably worth leaving in block for the minute. Make a set of draw nodes corresponding to each rotation. So yeah, as the block is uh, as a new block is created in the constructor, part of that creation is to create the draw nodes that are important to it. So I, mean, I could just actually inline that within this constructor, couldn't I? I have a feeling I'm gonna to want to use this in other places though. Um, but for now, so now I'll just put it inside the block function. As a, sorry, in, as a member in the block class. So, block constructor, various getters, set, and get tile bounds, get tile cells. Hmm. I feel like I should actually move it in over the top because it's part of the constructor logic. Right, create a draw node, blah blah blah, function, return node, don't need that. Right, aq.draw triangle, so it's still referencing the global uh, draw try function. And just here, I suppose I can just do self. And I probably don't, uh, I can actually probably remove tile num. For now, we'll leave it there. Just make sure that still works. Okay. Yep, still doing the same thing. Right. 
Ooh, yeah, and there's that glitch where it it seems to hang on. I have a I have a I had a thought recently that I might know what that is, so I might look into fixing that because that's quite an obvious glitch at the moment. Okay, so we've now got just we got draw triangle left by itself in my tile class. Doesn't seem like that's a particularly well named um, file name now. So let's see if I can re I might I think I might keep it and I might create a kind of a utils. Uh, do I want to call it utils? Could call it globals. Maybe globals is better um, for now as a kind of a place where I can throw these functions in that aren't necessarily um, part of anything else. I could it could be done as a part of a rendering class or drawing, but I'm loath to sort of specialise it that much yet. Let's just see. How do I do this? Um, I have a feeling I'm going to need to employ SmartKit to rename this. So we've got, I've modified it already, haven't I? So um, let's just commit that first. Commit, so it's um, move the create tile node at rotation method into block. Actually, I could just commit it locally. I don't have to push that. Never mind. And then now we want to view unchanged files. Go in here. Well, let's rename this to globals or utils. I think probably globals. Okay, so what does that do? That presumably does some under the covers git commands that will uh, rename it. Um, let's go back to view that. So yeah, we've effectively got tile.js removed, globals.js added. Slick edit says, what's going on? It's disappeared. So let's close it and remove. Remove file from the project, yes. Then add it back in again. Add files. Let's hope it's in the right place. Source. There it is, All right. And we have to modify project JSON as well. So. Just a little bit of reordering there. Resources obviously come first. Global seems like a good thing to go next. Then a splash screens, menu, and then we've got the game. Right. And grid and block. Let's reload that. I might have to restart gulp. We'll see. Well, so far it's all working alright. Let's see if Chrome has picked up the change in the files. Sources. Yeah, it's got globals in there now, so it's definitely not serving up anything to do with tile. Right. The other thing I did the other day was I still left this tile data as part of my AQ namespace, which I think I want to look at how I'm doing that and what, what, what that means, because that's part of the refactoring as well. Oh, hi, Akel. Good to see you. So, yeah, it's cool. There's quite a lot of uses of that. Actually, mostly in block, which is what I'd expect. A little bit in game. So, we've got new block. Uh, what have we got? Tile data dot length. That's number of tiles. Yeah. And similarly there. And then in grid, it's uh, this is part of the create a set of CC drawing objects. Oh, this is part of my currently unused function. So this is kind of, this looks like it's the kind of function that should probably be part of block and then the grid data is passed in. So as a function of block, the it can create a load of blocks based on grid data, but it could be the other way around. It's kind of like a, it's the situation where you've got two, two classes that are, need to be friends of each other at, at this instance, because the grids and the blocks go very closely together. But I could I could at least put that into block as data in there. 
Now, what I was going to try and figure out was how does Cocos2DJS do class data rather than object data? Is there a way of doing it so that I can effectively have that tile data inside my block class, but as something that's uh, static, so it's not repeated every time that a block is created? Oh, hi, Mikhail Glushko. Good to see you. Right. Let's just have a look at what Cocos2DJS might do. Cocos2D possibly the math classes. There's probably some um, static data in here, isn't there? Utility, what does that do? So it just creates things like that, doesn't it? Actually, what's going on? I think JavaScript terms. When I do this node.extend, the functions are all added to the prototype. There must these must be added to added as prototypes as well. I wonder if there's a something which allows static data. So this dot prototype instantiate a base class. Copy the properties over into the new prototype. Yeah, so we don't necessarily want it directly as a prototype as a property within that because each each time the our tile data structure will get duplicated in memory into every block that gets created, and I don't want that to happen. Create a dummy class constructor. Class ID. Uh, define property. No, that's, an, um, that's a JavaScript. Make the class extendable. What does that do? Um, Class dot extend, class dot implement, define getter and setter. So, uh, class prototype or an object, property name getter and setter, CC clone. Hmm. Nothing obvious in there. Ba manage JavaScript inheritance based on John Resig's simple JavaScript inheritance. Let's have a look at this. Cocos CD, does it support any other language for scripting? Um, good question. Um, I don't think so. Um, the the Cocos 2DX might support Lua. Um, let's just have a quick look. But where I'm using JavaScript, the idea is to have a web version of the game as well as mo uh, mobile and native. And the JavaScript code gets run within the SpiderMonkey virtual machine, which is all compiled and built natively for iOS and Android and other platforms. Um, plus 2 DX scripting. But I think since Lua is quite an embeddable scripting language um, that some people have used it. Yeah, so I had to create Cocos 2D game with Lua scripting. So I think the original Cocos 2D, which was an iOS product, or iOS framework, uh, supported Lua. I wonder if Focus 2DX does as well. Let's just... Focus 2DX, Lua. Yeah, so there is a bit of... There is some bindings for Lua within the C++ frameworks, but whether or not I can use that from the Focus 2DJS, I don't know. There may not have been a Lua interpreter written in JavaScript which will run on a web page. Although, actually, I bet there is. I bet if you search for one, there's a Lua interpreter written in JavaScript. Almost certainly going to be one. I won't go too far into that. If you use Lua in a couple of projects, it's, it's actually quite fun. Uh, you'd be familiar with it if you use uh, World of Warcraft scripting, I think. Well, most of their scripting was Lua. And what's the, um, what's the little tiny games console thing that... Uh, the guys who did um, Voxeltron uh, created. Is it Voxeltron or Vox Voxeltron? Lexaloffel Games. Pico 8, yes, the little fantasy console. That all uses Lua. Had a little play with that, it's rather nice. Anyway, sorry, I got, got distracted there. <laughs> uh, where was I? I was looking to see whether or not there, I was actually going to go to John Reisig's page. Um, huh. I thought there'd be a Go straight to that web. Oh, there we go. Can't start browser. Oh, never mind.
so. A couple of things to learn about the installation. Creating a constructor has to be simple. In order to create a new class, you must extend subclass. All the classes are from a single ancestor. The most challenging one, access to overridden methods has to be provided. Simple class creation. Uh, this is not a particularly well formatted web page, so it's difficult to uh, to read. Oh, excuse me, just adjusting my back cushion. Um, super method. Yeah. Let's just. How would I do this if I was just using JavaScript? Uh, I would stick it directly onto. Could I stick it directly onto that? I mean, there is some create methods. Oh, hi, Druxium. Good to see it. Let me just search. There used to be some um, methods in Cocoa Studio JS that were almost static. Let's find one in Node, for example. Um, core base node, CC node. Here we go. CC not, allocates and initializes a node. So cc.node.create is looks like a static function. So you just call it using cc.node.create and it returns a new node. I wonder if that node contains the create function. I might give it a quick try. What I'm going to do is stick something into my block class and then debug it. So if we define now, have I, uh, let's see, aq.block That will hope will give me an empty object or the existing block object. And then aq.block.tiledata. Actually, I'm not going to do that first because it will break. I'm going to do something like aq.block. Uh, should be class data. And we'll have some sub uh, some things. I'll just actually I'll just copy a couple of bits of this in for now. So reasonable structure. Right. So when this breaks nicely, fix it up. AQ dot insert tile data is not a function. Ah. So oh init tile data. Ah, okay. So init tile data was that something that has to be I've gone too far. Um where are we? So init tile data. Okay, I moved it into block aq dot tile data. This is the static functions which are supposed to initialize the tile data. Why is it not a function at this point then? Um, I guess that should be left in globals. Init tile data needs to be called game startup. It initializes the tile data array. Yes, it does indeed. Um, it's probably not block is included in the project last, so it hasn't got to the point in the runtime where um, it's called here, which is a bit awkward. Uh, let's see. Do I want to put that into... Okay, init tile data, yeah. Do I want to put that into the... Globals. <laughs> I'm I'm leaning to the point of putting globals and tile data back in at the minute. Uh, to get it working, I'm going to do that. I think. I don't want utility. I want my own globals. Ah, got some, uh, just got a bit of syntax going off. Oh, hi, Calder, good to see you. 
What went wrong there? Should be class data. Unexpected token, is it? Huh. What did I do wrong with that then? Right, so that's got stuff working again. Now let's put that bit in. Okay, that's still okay. So aq.block. Should be clear. Do I have to use var? Do I? Ah, I know what it is. I'm thinking it's a. It's not an. It's an. It's an object. You need key value pairs and not just sub objects. So I need to do an array there. Right, so still working. So let's see at the point where we initialize a block. Um, let's jump into the constructor. So here, and reload. So what have we got? We've got self equals this. So this is my instance. Let's have a look here. Self and this should be the same thing. So I don't have any reference to the this should be class data that I stuck in there yet. Prototype. No, where am I going to find that? Maybe it's in here. Uh, okay, so here's the prototype. So it's definitely not in there. The methods are in there, so my various methods, the constructor, create tile node at rotation. But I don't see should be class data. I wonder if that's even possible to reference that. Let's just try it in here. So, uh, aq.block.should be class data zero. So that one ought to work. And possibly also to be two, but to one equals self dot should be class data one. Let's dive in and look at that and see what happens. Reload. So that didn't work. Console cannot be property zero of undefined. So at that point it's undefined. So that bit's not working. So I definitely can't use that as a way of storing data. What about is it in here? Jump over. No, looks like it's also undefined as well. Cannot be probably one of undefined, so that doesn't work. Maybe if I do it afterwards. Let's ditch that bit. Come down here. So after my, after the 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 call to cc.node.extend, I then stick a bit of extra data in. Right. So. Actually, I want to put the um, the methods back that I just took out in, in the constructor. There'd be a blog post on this if I can get it to work. Like I did with all of the... Um, so I spent a few streams uh, early on figuring out how to do the uh, extending the node class with custom rendering code. It's sort of a bit of a sidetrack I went down. Um, this is kind of similar as well. Um, where am I going? I want to check inside block and so that, uh, that first one might not have been broken. So aq dot block dot should be class data actually is referenceable. So aq dot block 
that's the class and should be class data is definitely in there but self is an instance it's got this underscore underscore instance id i presume that comes from that that class uh going on here self yeah there it is that's where that comes from uh so we've got self doesn't seem to have a second copy of that data in anywhere that i can find the, the prototype for the class uh, it's got all of the um got all the methods my ones and the the ones that come from cc node but it doesn't have that bit of static data uh, what about the constructor that's an object itself oh there it is there's something there Ooh, right so does that reference the same bit of data or is it copied that's the question uh if it's the same if it's the same so if every block object has exactly the same should be class data in it then we are okay so what i want to do is modify it somehow so let's take i'll just pick a random number in so the first time, let's do a, a yeah, class data. So I'm going to add in an, add in a field here, just a random field uh, for a test, and I'm going to call it zero. That's, probably won't use it, but I'll put it in the second one as well. Test zero, test one, and what I'm going to do. Is when this class is loaded, or when the when the constructor is called. So actually, it's this. The second one is not going to be any good good to us. I'll just step through that, and it will break. Yep, there it goes. So that we can ignore. But if I do so, we've got. Uh, Temp one dot test equals or we'll stick a random number in there. The second time through this constructor, when it creates a second block, that value should be ninety nine because it won't have copied the existing. Because the the thing that's being referenced here shouldn't be a copy. It should be the single instance in memory. That's, that's, that's my theory anyway. Let's see what happens. Actually, make it slightly easier. That test. <laughs> Don't want to be testing any VAT. Uh, to one dot test. Reload. So, first time in test is zero because that's how it's defined and I'm going to set it to 99 and then continue Ooh, second time in must be another constructor somewhere where's that come from anyway what is it at the moment it's 99 so it's using the same bit of data that's interesting why did I get two blocks constructed there there must have been another one called from somewhere just curious now call stack so this is coming out of new block which is out of the constructor of game yeah that's what i was expecting it's just if not mouse move yeah that's the first block in the uh in the scene the second oh okay now we get a second one and test is 99 why did that one have where did that breakpoint trigger twice the first time I ran it? First time through, we're in constructor of game, new block, yep. Continue. And it now it's triggered again. We're in game Ah, we create a temp block. Right, what do we do there? Oh yeah, that's my um a bit of testing code I did last time. Actually I only need that temp block for the code that runs under the mouse move block. I believe. I thought it was under there. Let's just check the temp block 
is only used inside this bit of code. Yeah, it is. So if I put that inside there, that'll just give me one call to the block constructor, where upon it start the test data starts at zero. We set it to ninety nine, and then second time through, it's we're referencing it there already and it's okay so that looks to me like it might be what I want it's a bit of static data I can reference it by calling by using the actual block class referencer I should be able to do that from anywhere um, and it's not duplicated for each object that gets created as far as I can tell um, I, I can't know for sure without manually digging into all of the um, uh, the variable members. I mean, there's so much stuff going on in terms of JavaScript hierarchies and prototypes and things. It's going to be difficult to know. And realistically, even if it was duplicated lots of times, uh, it's not going to be a problem until we start getting hundreds and thousands of blocks. So I can. <laughs> it's a problem for another day if it even if it even is a problem. Right. So let's go back to how I want to define it. Should be class data. Don't need that anymore. Um, keep looking at people arriving. Uh, get that. Hi, Aetheric. Good to see you. What if I test data? So, I've got this aq.tile data, which I can. I kind of want to leave it at the top of the function, but um, it doesn't seem to want to go there, does it? I mean, if I just put it, it seems to be after that. That it has to work because I, I suspect CC node extend does a load of extra stuff. Uh, it's, it's okay. I can, I can live with it down at the bottom of the file. Right. Static tile data. Uh, used when creating blocks and other construction. So I can call it AQ. Oh, ah, my control arrow keys, flip monitors, never mind. I keep doing that. AQ.block.tile data. And then now we want to reference init tile data. Some, I suppose I could actually put this as a function down here, can't I? Let's just, we don't need init tile data. Why does that need to be called out of any, it doesn't even, it can be anonymous. What I'm saying is uh, init tile data uh, let's let's just do function and invoke it straight away. Uh, an immediate, what's that called? An IFE immediate function expression. Um, so this will probably be executed within the code loading just after this is created. And now I have to reference aq dot block dot tile data. I'm going to need block dot. So what it actually does is run that little loop, which calls pre-rotate tile, which in turn calls get tile anchor. Okay, so I now no longer need to call init tile data out of the game creation, which is actually I'm happy about that. And I don't need the globals there. So fingers crossed. What are the odds that's going to work? Some other initialization is probably going to be uh, be wrong at this point. Ah, I've still got references to, to tile data, so let's just find those tile data. Actually, aq dot tile data. Right. So this is kind of where the grid 
needs to be friendly with the block and pull out the tile data. I might be able to make methods on block that do the same thing in this instance. Uh, make it a bit more friendly. I'll do that in a minute once it's working. And again, we're in the grid and we're looking at tile data. And down here, still in the grid functions, looking at tile data. And in game, again, I should probably make a function on block that returns a random tile. That would be probably better layout or a better uh, structure. And then the rest is inside block. Uh, what's that? AQ dot block tile data. Actually, so yes, we're going to need quite a few of these. Search for that again. No, no search is good. As I do this, my brain is flip-flopping between should I have left a tile class which contains the tile data, and should the block class be using that? And I don't, I don't know. To be honest, it doesn't really matter in a lot of cases. I'm sure. Um, for large projects where lots of people are w working on the source code, this kind of thing does get important. But for my purposes, I think it's going to be okay. Yeah, we're working again. Right, so let's go and quickly look at what we're doing here. We're creating a new block. And the point of it being inside the game, so a new block, is we're using a bit of grid data. Well, actually, we're creating a new block and we're positioning it somewhere on the grid, aren't we? But the actual block object itself is a random one, and it's defined as a random one based on block tiling data. So I reckon inside block I can have a function which returns a random tile or random tile number. Let's see what we want to do. Uh, game out. AQ block tile data. Well, it could be if I did it down here. Dot uh, get random tile num. I'm just looking at the second bit of code here. So that gets the random number, that's the obvious bit. And this is a special way of calling this new block method. If you pass in an undefined block, it will actually use the random one. Otherwise it will, you can pass in a block type. Um, if I did doing we're doing get random time number it's also tile it could be get tile number yeah I'm, I'm, sounds like it's getting complicated um i don't want to confuse myself in the future and these how is new block called i'm not sure i'm not keen on that um that testing for undefined so we basically we don't actually use it anywhere we pass in an explicit block there and then we do Blocks to start with there, and then, oh, then we call it that. That's where we call it. We call it with a empty, empty function, um, or empty parameters. Let's make it explicit. Let's go for new block and new random block. And oh, 
So I'll just copy that for a moment. So and random number and then basically just return it. New random block. Uh, I don't want to do that, I just want to do return new block. So that's a new random block and then create a new block and add it to the game, create a block. So what do I want to do here? I want to do a specific block at a position. Here's a specific block at a position and here is a random new block. So create a new block and add it to the game panel at the top middle. Actually, it's it's just a cool new block. That isn't it. So does that do what I want? Create a new random block. And here I want to call new random block. So for the moment, let's just check I haven't broken it. Okay, new random block, okay good. And conf where's my config? There it is. Yeah, so this is specific blocks that are being created. Right. Back to game. I want to. So here, I don't necessarily. I don't particularly want to reference uh, new. I don't want to reference the block number of tiles directly. I, I could do, but um, I think new block should be a... so rather than calling new block here with a type I could do new block Hmm. Oh, now I'm confusing myself. I'm, I'm, it's really awkward trying to exact, trying to think, second guess myself, and think what I might want to do in the future and how best to structure this. Um, any ideas would be really uh, appreciated. Uh, because new block of a certain type, or new random block. So it's n the functions I need: a new block of a type at and position and a new random block, but that actually defines the position as well as being so yeah, so what I can do is at the top middle, so this, so this is create a new block and add it to the game panel at the specified position, and I move these ones um, I'm going to need them in both places, aren't I? 
box wide. Here. So, grid X, bar grid Y, and I can do that. And then this bit down here. And I don't need blocks wide. Right. So that adds it to the function. Oh, hydrate, good to see you. Right. Game panel, add child, and set falling block. Yeah, create a new block and add it to the game panel at the specified position. Uh, there's, been, there's a few side effects to these functions, which are probably not a good thing. This calling set falling block and so on might not be a good idea, but I'll leave it for him for now. Also, calls set block as a side effect whereas yeah this one does the same thing but because it delegates to new block oh and something broke Oh, that's interesting. Why did that break? Self dot new block. Oh, I know. It's because I called new block here. And that's not. That's um. That's not it. That might be it. it must be a new random block. That's uh. It's broken there somewhere. Sources. So I'm now refactoring things and breaking it more, uh, more, compre more, more comprehensively. Um, it's probably a good point to stop because it's getting late in the day, and I've had a nice, uh, nice taxing afternoon already. Um, Okay, so that jumps into new block directly because it's called by this constructor. Yep, that's fine. Okay, now we come in here. Ah, of course, I'm not passing it the, um, the grid X and grid Y. Silly me. Grid X, grid Y. That'll be it. Welcome, vodka, 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 228 or whatever your name was. Uh, I definitely remember remember your uh, handle from the other day, and I believe I mentioned that I was a a gin fan, but I also like vodka as well. There we go. Right now we're back in business. Right. So. Make this a little bit more explicit. Random tile on. Okay. So do I want to call uh, a function in block to get a random tile number? Yeah, let's do that. So that should hopefully be, I'm going to comment on it and say static block method to just return a random tile and 
for good measure, get tile count. It's going to come in there as well. Actually, uh, let's do that. Right, so that removes the reference to the tiles from here. Let's just check it's still working. Right, and we get random tiles. That's good. Do another search for tile data. So we're still referring directly in here. So referring re references to tile data in block.js are fine, but I've got to think a little bit about whether or not I want to reference them directly in here. Create grid block nodes. This is my not currently used function. I might actually just leave that one for now. But here, um, ooh, get. I could definitely use another. So let's do a get. Get tile data for num. And we want to return this. Here, I think that might have been in my uh, testing code as well, isn't it? Oh no, uh, it's okay. But I seem to just recall a usage of new block that might break. Here we go. So this one here, that's new block. What does this do? Oh no, that's okay. That's passing in the block explicitly uh, with the X and Y. That one's passing in zero. That one's the function call after random block. And then I had the explicit call to new random block, which makes it a bit easier to see what's going on. Uh, oh. New random block, there we go. So you can see that a new random block occurs in the game loop on the, up the update function. So I'm just going to go back and test this. Yep, still moving around. And nothing broke along that code path because uh, I'm going to still probably use that shortly. Right. So that's. I'm quite happy with that now. Um, there's still a bit of unsureness about the tiles and blocks and where they should go, but at least all the methods are in block. And I think it's going to force me to think carefully about how tile data is referenced from the rest of the code from now on. Um, static uh, block to get tile data for a given number. I suspect I already put methods on the block. Get tile num, yeah, we did that there. Get tile data. So I can, I mean, that's that's doing the same thing effectively, isn't it? Um, 
that they're just convenience methods on blocks once they're once you have a block object um, but in certain places that that comes you don't have that okay initialize the tile data array I'm going to so it's called as an immediately x function right So now I have nothing in there. Uh, I, I won't go through and re rebuild the this for now. Um, is it going to be useful in the future? Shall I just get rid of it? I did check it in. I committed. Um, uh, what time is it? Four o'clock. So I could just go over things again and make remind myself of uh, what was going on. CC.class, config, globals. For now, I might make a comment on this class or on this file just to um, remind myself what's going on. Okay, uh, global at least in the aq dot namespace Meth uh, methods are defined here. So at the moment I've just got a draw triangle inside my globals thing. So that's uh, okay, I'm good with that. So grid. So what have we got in block now? We do have block uh, static block dot tile data structure uh, new constructor getters for block data static getters for tile data new constructor for block objects and we did a bunch so we got rid of that we don't really care about these things anymore uh, get tile bounds and get tile cells did I did I move that yeah, block. So that's part of block now. Get tile bounds. And it's used on the falling block object. So get tile bounds. What about get tile cells? Is that in there too? Yeah, I move that into block. Check so so that one I think did I get rid of that? Yep, got rid of that. That was the other day. Init tile data, no longer need that, and don't need that. So now we have, uh, I might put globals up the top actually. So we've got the game, that structure hasn't changed. We've got grid, um, insert block into grid, create new blocks, yeah, create new block functions actually. So we've added multiple ones of those. So well, <laughs> I actually broke myself things to do. Move the tile functions into block, yep, done that. Two functions to go, mainly rendering related. Okay, decide best place to handle collision detection. Oh, okay, so that was the next set of refactoring requirements I was going to do. Let's update that to 19th of January. So, decide on the place to handle the collision detection. So here I was doing various collision detection things inside of the game. So, for example, inside the update loop, uh, when a key is pressed, it loops over collision detection routines to see if or not the rotation that occurs leaves the block in the right place um, and doesn't overhang the edge of the screen or anything like that. So it subtly shifts it out. I think if I do that, 
yeah, it shifts it back. And there was also some, uh, yeah, the um, glitches with the the movement. There's a few things still to do. I might actually start making myself a, a list of things to remind myself to do. I'm gonna, uh, I've called it refactor.txt, but um, I might do uh, to do or things noticed. Uh, dropping blocks sometimes stick when they're not supposed to. Uh, I think that's mainly it for the minute. I won't I won't get it to happen again, but I think it's to do with the fact that it's testing the um, the grid cells over the edge of the block when it shouldn't. Yeah, it's stuck there when it shouldn't really have. Um, so let's uh, let's leave it for there at that point today. That's an hour and five minutes. I did quite a long one on Tuesday. So oh hi, Stephanie, good to see you. Um, <laughs> thanks for joining me. I'm just about to actually uh, close the stream for today. Uh, it's only been an hour, but I'm only doing this um, a couple of times a times a week. Uh, I will actually, while I'm thinking about to do, is just search for things I've already got in the source code. Um, Oh, that's going to get <laughs> lots of to-dos inside the Cocoa Studio JS project. Wow, oh, loads of them, all sorts of things, and then a few more. Yeah, <laughs> I wonder if there are any good ones. Need fix for WebGL, Circle support, Rotation X not implemented. Lovely. Fix me if it is wrong. What's that? Oh, it's commented out. Uh, font stuff. Oh yeah, lots of problems with fonts. Always get problems with fonts. Anyway. Back to my own code. Deter oh yeah, so this I think is the, the the crux of the fact that the crux of where the blocks are getting stuck when they shouldn't. Figure out why game collision seems to be off. Yeah, that again, that's same to do as I've just entered. Calculate this once at startup. I have some caching values to do. Um, I'll not worry about that uh, for now. And that, that's actually yeah, that's about it so far. All right, good. All right. Smart Git. Actually, let's lose that. Let's leave that. I'll leave that for next time. See what we've got. So we've got remove tile. We added globals. Refactoring. Excellent. Commit. Okay. So um, changed tile.js to globals because only one global function is left a uh, bit more tile block refactoring now all references to tile data are contained within the block object class okay Now I can commit and push that. Oh, smart git installation needs to be upgraded. New new build. Oh, that will happen next time. We're good to go. So, not a lot of progress in terms of things happening today, but I'm much happier with the uh, the structure of the project now. Um, next time it'll be. Do I want to refactor? No, actually, I'm going to do a combination of things. I'm going to refactor and also uh, make the collision detection sort of properly start doing its thing because I had a I had a set of naive collision detection code to start with which is now redundant and I've marked a couple of these ones as redundant and I spent a good few streams recently creating a new collision detection routine called collide objects which does the does the business carefully of figuring out whether or not the triangles of the um, of the blocks and the things are actually colliding but that that's that that code I wrote is only used under my test case condition of mouse moving at the moment. So here we go, you can see where the different coll collisions, are. as the blocks are not colliding, that's fine, but as they overlap, then the little purple block or green block gives me an indication of what kind of collision has been occurring uh, on the slopes or on the flat bits. So that'll be next time, next Thursday, no, next Tuesday evening, that's right, Tuesday evening, 8 p.m., that's the next stream. Uh, so the afternoon ones are, are Thursdays, Tuesday ones are evenings, and don't forget to follow me on Live Coding TV if you want to see, or if you want to get notified when, when the streams get 
uh, when the streams get started. That's what I want to say. Right. Thanks again. Oh, thanks, thanks, Rooney, and and, and frankly, I appreciate you hanging around and watching. And I will hopefully see you again sometime soon. Cheerio. I should go back to my.